Hey, greetings, Performance Reviews here, and I have the first Dyson here at the Vacuum Cleaner Museum. We're going to go over its quirks and features and show its working vacuum. Keep in mind, some of the audio is mixed because it was at a vacuum cleaner convention, and they were like the paparazzi around this thing. I'm going to go over some of the quirks and features of this because it's, it's an odd machine, and it's a machine that we're probably not going to get a chance to touch ever again. Uh, I was talking with the curator of the museum and he's saying he thinks he has one of two to five of these that's left so this is I'm just nervous touching it alone um, but there's a button here and the cyclone you have to take the handle off and the cyclone just pops out and moves here and one of the problems with this cyclone is there's no screen to catch the dirt so you have to now to put that into context you can see that there's a screen on the modern Dyson cyclones and this keeps larger objects from getting stuck in the cyclones for the most part Right here, which was an afterthought. And it just, man, this is so weird how you put this together. All right, well, I didn't break that. Um, that's good. And then this hose has to clip right there, right there. And then we have a dusting brush, which oddly enough articulates. I don't really get the purpose of that. You have this radiator brush, and a nice thin crevice tool, and this is similar to what we would see with Phantom later, kind of. And then this guy, right, right here, if you want to pull this off and use your accessories, this is your hose adapter. This is just it's very interesting, and everything is brittle and discolored. Man, all that is just brittle and weird. So I have accidentally pulled the brush roller section off. I'm going to, uh... there we go. That just clicks in. The brush roller is wood. The belt is exposed. On the later versions that would be sold in Japan, they would put a belt guard in place on the bottom and a height adjuster. Um, the wheels are actually interesting. They're not bad. The shape of them is, well, that's a DC-07 wheel. Upon post-production, looking for pictures of a wheel on a DC-07, I realized the wheel I'm referring to on a DC-07 was only on the target red version, and it was only the first iteration of it, so that's actually a very extremely rare DC-07 variant I'm referencing. I think most of you will be more familiar with like the DC-01 or DC-04 wheel. As you can see the original color of this, it has faded a little bit. It is just bizarre. Now we're going to do a working vacuum test on it, don't you worry. But the size of this is so bizarre that it's not going to be super accurate, so it might be off just a little. Uh, but here it is, uh, headphone warning, by the way. Right here with this, 84. 84. What's the reading on it now? Still pressure. It's sealed is only 30. 30? And working's about 10. Now. So a cordless Henry is more powerful but, but, significantly. But, 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 but. Let's check something out. 45 or 60. Let's see what the motor Oh. of the Zanussi built machine is actually pulling. Oh my god, that filter. When we take the cyclone off, it's just like a DC-07 that way. It makes a hundred and some, right? Oh, it, it, very, it tremendously increases. That filter picks now. me This was made by Zanussi in Italy. He had, um, I think f there were only 500 of these ever made. I believe this one's serial number is 46, don't quote me, but it's, it's one of the original 500. Um, what he did when he showed this to the Japanese, and the Japanese would um, give him his royalties every month, the licensing fees, 
They wanted him to change it they, when they called it the G force. Notice that the head has no carpet height adjustment on it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, there's no metal sole plate. That was what they, the Japanese wanted a metal sole plate to protect the brush That's and a height adjuster. Yeah. Now, if you want to see the full Dyson story, I have another video about that. I'll put that in the end card here and in the link below. Now, you have to keep in mind, this is the Vacuum Cleaners Collector Conference, and a machine that we think there's only like four left in the world. These guys are super excited about that. I know it might be hard for some of you normies to understand, but people were super excited about seeing this machine run, and it's quite rare being a 220 machine, and then this is probably the only one in North America right now. So I tried to get the best audio I could of the machine with the studio mic, but there is a lot of talk in the background. Now we're not going to do a pickup test with this machine. Because there's no pre-motor filter, all that stuff would get caught in the motor and possibly ruin this very rare example of the machine. So we're not even picking up normal dust with this thing. Again, it is incredibly fragile. And upon picking it up and even just wheeling it back to the corner where it lives in the museum, I was extremely nervous. If you know where any other examples of these are, please comment below. We'd love to find out who has the remaining a uh, couple left. I know there's one at Manchester Vax in England. I think there's one that James Dyson himself has, but I'm sure somebody else has to have one. This certainly is a bizarre machine being made in Italy, marketed in England, and then later marketed in Japan. It really lacks a lot of actual critical thought that would be put into most other vacuums at the time, which just about anything of this time period would have been better than this. Uh, but again, I'm so glad that I got to take a look at it. And, you know, Dyson is now a huge company, so this little shitty machine really means something now here in 2021 and going forward. Big thank you to Tom Gasco of the Vacuum Cleaner Museum of Missouri. I would recommend that you check out the video of him telling the Dyson story. That's the filter. It's the only filter on this machine. So that's why he put a bottle brush in the tube. <laughs> Because, you know, Mr. I, I, I spend my life inventing prototypes. I thought that was a good idea. Well, I hope you check out that video if you want more of the original Dyson vacuum. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button.